The Los Angeles Lakers, an American basketball team based in Los Angeles, might be the worst shooting team in the history of the NBA. This has been evident in their gameplay so far this season. Their roster suggests they do not understand that shooting is essential in the NBA offense. What do you think? Watch this video to the end for details on this. The Lakers could be the NBA's worst shooting team ever. Due to their poor shooting, the team's present setup is fatally flawed, as evidenced by their 0-3 season start. The current Lakers lineup defies the fundamental truth that shooting is the oxygen modern NBA offenses need to breathe, even though the three-point shooting revolution has changed basketball for good. It's difficult to emphasize how terrible it's been thus far. Just 21.2% of the Lakers' 118 attempts at three-pointers have been successful so far this season. They're shooting 40.7% overall and 23% on jump shots. Since the 2014-15 Philadelphia 76ers, a team designed to lose as many games as possible to secure the number one overall pick, no team has shot under 41% for a whole season. The Lakers weren't made to tank. Since they don't own the first round pick this year, it isn't an option. But it's unclear what they were made for, since it certainly isn't shooting the ball. It's not the fault of any particular player or coach that the Lakers are unable to perform the one fundamental skill of the game, which is to put the ball in the basket. Instead, it's the outcome of a string of perplexing personnel choices that have left the most opulent team in the NBA devoid of any elite shooting talent. So feel free to point the finger at LeBron. James, Anthony Davis, or Russell Westbrook. The underlying cause of this team's lack of success is much more complex. This young season has taken opponents less than one game to realize they don't even need to defend the Lakers' shooters. The Lakers tried 22 open three-pointers throughout the last two games. Of those, just four have been inserted. This represents 18.2%, the poorest percentage among the 105 occasions in which a team attempted 20 uncontested three-pointers throughout two games during the player-tracking era since 20. 2013-2014. The Lakers currently have the lowest offense in the NBA, scoring a pitiful 97 points for every 100 possessions. No other current team has a point average lower than 103. They would have the worst jumper shooting of 23% over the previous 25 seasons. Statistics shed light on the Lakers' early season troubles and are more than just obscure data. They serve as a symbol for the difficulties the Lakers have had building their roster. These problems also begin at the top of the roster. This year, three players on the Lakers' elite level, Westbrook, James, and Davis are paid more than $37 million. Everyone else on the Lakers roster, or the second tier, makes about $40 million collectively. The issue persists regardless of price. Neither tier has enough shooting ability. 200 players have tried at least 1,000 jumpers during the past five NBA seasons. Davis has a 40.9% effective field goal percentage and is ranked 198th within that large group. Of Davis and Westbrook, Westbrook has a worse performance of 40.4%, with James on board, the Lakers have one of the best on-ball playmakers in basketball history guiding their offense. But that also means that Westbrook and Davis are playing off the ball a lot, and the statistics show that doesn't scare anyone. Westbrook and Davis have the most open shooting lanes of the 167 NBA players who have attempted at least 10 three-pointers this season. Once more, this is not just a piece of obscure trivia. Opponents have used centers to defend Westbrook in two of the Lakers' first three games. These centers stayed at ease near the paint while daring Westbrook to shoot wide open open jumpers, which he gladly did, much to the dismay of Lakers supporters. Even though Westbrook is far and away the league leader in uncontested three-point attempts, his 12 attempted three-pointers this season rank only 90th in the NBA. Only one of his 12 attempts, which included eight with no defender in his line of sight within eight feet, was successful. Comparatively, the average percentage of wide-open three-point attempts across the league is 36.8%. As a result, even when James and Davis are running a pick-and-roll, the Lakers' competitors frequently have a big help defender ready to guard the rim. Yusuf Nurkic, a 290-pound powerhouse center for the Portland Trailblazers, guarded Westbrook on Sunday. Nurkic was waiting to aid Portland inside and grab rebounds even when Westbrook was positioned off-ball and beyond the arc. Ivica Zubac, a 7-footer with the LA Clippers, faced Westbrook last week. When the Lakers travel to the Denver Nuggets on Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN, it shouldn't come as a surprise to see two-time reigning MVP Nikola Jokic playing free safety instead of ostensibly covering a wide-open Westbrook. A good shooter doesn't just make three-pointers. They also help their teammates get more space. However, rival teams are crowding the interior because the Lakers' starting lineup lacks even a single reliable catch-and-shoot threat on the perimeter. Rival teams are crowding the interior. Any front offense entrusted with creating a champion around these three studs would have to prioritize shooting across the lineup because it is a warning sign. Later this season, James will surpass the NBA's all-time greatest 
scorer, but he currently holds the record for most three-point assists. In comparison to NBA three-point king Stephen Curry, who's assisted 3,133 times, James has helped 3,449 times. For two main reasons, James became the master of the three-point dime. The first is his exceptional capacity for attacking the paint, dismantling defenses, and spotting open shooters on the periphery. He always chooses the right move. The second is that ever since he left Cleveland in 2010, the teams he's played for have generally done an excellent job surrounding him with shooting talent. Ray Allen and Kyle Korver, who are second and fifth on the NBA's career three-pointer record respectively, were teammates of James on those prior stops. James has played with roughly a fourth of the 48 NBA players who have shot at least 40% from outside the arc throughout their careers. However, none of those guys played for the Lakers this year. James continues to fulfill his obligation. James has directly assisted 15 of the Lakers' 62 wide-open three-point tries this season, but the Lakers have only made three of those efforts. Despite his teammates only shooting 48.8% of his passes, including 25% on three-pointers, he ranks 11th in the NBA with 7.3 assists per game. Around James, the Miami Heat and Cleveland Cavaliers created the framework for long-term success in the 2010s, which resulted in eight straight finals appearances. However, the Lakers tore up the blueprints in the 2020s, and their strategy is ineffective. Although not terrific, the Lakers' last season was 18th in three-pointers made per game and 22nd in three-point percentage, which is far better than their current performance. Four of the top five three-point shooters from the Lakers group from the previous season are not on this season's team, though. Carmelo Anthony, Avery Bradley, and Wayne Ellington are still unsigned. Still, Malik Monk has signed with the Sacramento Kings as a free agent. 49% of the purple and gold successful three-point attempts came from that group last season, and despite the team's summer moves, all that shooting was not replaced. The Lakers' perimeter talent has deteriorated from adequate to starving. The Lakers were a below-average three-point shooting team when they won the championship in 2019-2020. Still, they had Danny Green and Kentavious Caldwell-Pope in their rotation, two archetypal 3 and D specialists who could spread the floor and make shots at efficient rates while also playing good defense. Also, the Lakers' team-building strategy is nothing but a failure. While front offices throughout the league have stacked their squads with an increasing number of three-point shooters, the Lakers' approach has gone the other way. According to early results, Lakers general manager Rob Palinka's team-building strategy was a complete failure. Dennis Schroeder, who shot 33.5% from three-point range in his lone season as a Laker before departing in free agency and re-signing this year. Schroeder, a career 33.8% three-point shooter, is currently out after having surgery on his right thumb, was acquired by the Lakers in exchange for Draymond Green months after they had won a game on edge. Later that year, the Lakers traded Caldwell Pope to the Washington Wizards as part part of the disastrous Westbrook trade. He's been shooting 47.6% of his threes in Denver this year. This season, he's made 10 three-pointers compared to the combined nine made by the Lakers bench. While it's reasonable to expect the Lakers to become better, it's nearly unheard of for a team to shoot this poorly for the whole season. Their offensive potential has been limited by the present personnel setup. Only Patrick Beverly, who is shooting 21.4% this year, is a Lakers player with a career three-point shooting percentage higher than 37%. Palenka will need to make significant personnel changes. Otherwise, this offense is doomed to flop, and the Lakers are doomed to send another lottery pick to the New Orleans Pelicans, perhaps the choice that results in the once-in-a-lifetime talent, Victor Wembanyama. That's all for today. The Los Angeles Lakers need to up their game, else it could be disastrous for them. What other topic would you like us to discuss? Could you inform us in the comments section? Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.